from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Lauren Long is the author and illustrator of the number one New York Times. Say that one more time. <coughs> Lauren Long is the author and illustrator of the number, number one, one New, New York, York Times bestseller. bestseller. That is awesome. Otis and the Tornado, as well as the illustrator for Of the I Sing by President Barack Obama. Woo! Otis and the Tornado is the companion to the book Otis. Otis and his farm friends are enjoying a summer's day, playing their favorite game, follow the leader. I like Suddenly, that game. the day turns frightening. The birds stop chirping. The wind picks up, and the sky turns dark and stormy. It's a tornado! Oh, want to find out what happens to Otis and his farm friends? All right, welcome, Lauren Long! Long. All right, thank you, guys. Hi. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, when I was this size, I liked to draw. All those years ago, I used to draw Snoopy on the kitchen floor when I was four years old. I would take the funny papers out of the cartoon section of the newspaper, and I would find my, char my favorite character, Snoopy, and I would just sit there with pencil and paper and try and draw Snoopy and make Snoopy look like the famous Snoopy. My drawing of Snoopy looked like that. All those years ago, I never dreamed I would write something and I have written a book called Otis and the Tor or Otis. That was the first book, Otis. It came out a, a, about a year ago. All right. Now, when you guys write stories, the first question you should ask yourself is, what am I interested in? Well, I love tractors. When I worked on a horse farm in summer, when I was a college student, I worked on a horse farm, and I got to ride a rickety old tractor. This tractor was old and ancient, but it still had a job to do on the farm. And I thought it still had value to the farm. It gave me the first idea for Otis, a friendly little tractor who befriends a baby calf. In the first story of Otis, the farmer replaces Otis with a big yellow tractor and parks Otis out back. And that's the first problem in the wonderful existence of Otis. And then, the little calf gets stuck in Mud Pond, and somebody comes to save the day. It was Otis the Tractor. And I had a new idea, my brand new story. First we have Otis. He's become a friend to me, like a book that I loved when I was little. I used to love The Pokey Little Puppy, and books like Mike Mulligan's Steam Shovel. And certainly those contributed to my idea for my stories about Otis the Little Tractor. Um, so what I would like to do, if it's okay with you guys, is I would like to read from my brand new book, and then I want to do a drawing for you guys. So let's see if we're ready. Are they projected up there? Do we have the start of my book? Otis and the Tornado. Life was calm on the farm where the friendly little tractor named Otis lived. It was summer, the sun shined bright, the birds chirped, and after all the work was done, Otis and his friend, the little calf, liked to play. Are the images up there? Can you see Otis and the little calf? Thank you. They would gather all their farm friends for a grand game of follow the leader. They would take turns being the leader, as they marched along, Otis would go first, putt, puff, putt at each up, followed by the little calf who would bound ahead, bawling all the while. Soon, the horse would trot to the lead with, with a neigh, neigh as his hooves clip, clop, clip, clop. Finally, the ducks would waddle to the front with a chorus of quack, 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 quack. They all followed the leader, up by the apple tree, around the barn, down the rolling hill, past mud pond, beyond the cornfield, across the meadow, and along the banks of Mud Creek. What a fun crowd they were. Everyone was so friendly, except the bull. The bull was nobody's friend. When he was not in his pen, he was kept in a pasture all by himself. Any of the farm animals got close to the bull, he would stand at the fence and snort and snarl and huff hot air. Suddenly, with a burst, he would run back and forth along the fence. Then he would stop and glare at them. 
like a statue, never moving a muscle except to flare his nostrils. The bull did not like anyone, and everyone was afraid of him. Once Otis tried to make friends with the bull. He took him a shiny red apple from the apple tree and, and invited him to play. But the bull snorted and snarled and glared at Otis. Then he stomped his hooves in the dirt and charged. The bull slammed into Otis just inches away from where Otis stood. From that day on, Otis decided to stay clear of the bull altogether. Not going near that bull. One day, the farm skies began to swirl and turn dark. The winds blew and the rain came down. The animals got in the barn and grew, rest the, in the barn grew restless and jittery. The skies tumbled and turned, turned and tumbled. Otis didn't mind the rain, but there was something different about this storm that he could feel deep down in his pipes. All at once, the wind stopped blowing, not even a breeze, and the rain disappeared. The sky turned a strange shade of green and the farm fell completely still. The only sound Otis heard as he putt puffed toward the barn was the farmer shouting in the distance, it's coming fast, get down in the cellar. The farmer was in such a hurry he had no time for the animals. What was all the fuss about, Otis wondered. Then he turned and saw something that rattled his frame and shook his fenders, a tornado a tornado, and it was heading straight toward the farm. What would happen to all the animals locked in the barn? Otis sprung into action. He nudged the latch of the little calf stall until the door swung open. Next, Otis freed the pig and the sheep. The winds howled closer. He stretched to unlatch the horses and the cows' doors. At the same time, click, clack, the animals were free. They followed Otis out of the barn and into the swirling winds. They followed him down the rolling hill, past Mud Pond, beyond the cornfield, across the meadow, over the bank, and down into Mud Creek. Tucked down at the lowest part of the farm, Otis, the little calf, and all of their farm friends felt safe. Otis sighed with relief. Now they just had to huddle together and wait it out. But just as they squeezed close and tight, Otis heard an awful bellowing cry, the sound of a large creature in trouble, the bull. He was locked in his pen. From the safety of Mud Creek, Otis saw the tornado speeding in the terrified animal's direction. Lightning crashed, the tornado howled, the bull screamed, and in a flash, Otis was gone. He Put, he raced across the meadow, putt, puff, puttity chuff, beyond the cornfield, past Mud Pond, up the rolling hill to the bullpen. Otis found the bull tucked under the shed, shaking in fear. There was no time to lose. Otis tried to unlatch the gate. It was locked. He slammed head on into it. The gate shook, but held firm. Otis rammed it again. The gate teetered. The bull wailed like a baby. Otis spun around threw himself in reverse, revved his engine, and charged backward into the gate. Crash! The gate shattered into pieces. Otis shook himself off, gave the bull a friendly chuff, and peeled out. The bull followed Otis down the rolling hill, past Mud Pond, and beyond the cornfield. The tornado roared like a freight train as they crossed the meadow, and just as Otis and the bull dove for cover over the bank and into Mud Creek, the tornado touched down, narrowly missing them. Otis, the little calf, the bull, and all of the farm friends ducked their heads and closed their eyes. They'd never heard such a fury or felt such a rage. But they were all safely tucked down in the muddy creek's bed at the lowest part of the farm. And they stayed huddled there until long after the tornado had passed. They came out only when it was calm and the sun shined bright and the birds began to chirp. They found a farm that needed great repair. But when the work was all over and it was time to play, the farm friends discovered they had a new playmate. 
This one snorted and stomped his hooves in the dirt. He flared his nostrils and huffed hot air. But instead of a snarl and a glare, he wore a happy grin and a friendly gaze as he took his place in line with Otis and the little calf in a grand game of follow the leader. The end. So it's a big honor to be here in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, from the Midwest. Thank you. Yeah. Go Cincinnati. Going to be back there. I've been gone for a couple of weeks, so I'm looking forward to getting home. When I was little, about your guys' age, I, w I lived in Missouri. When you live in uh, states like Missouri and Ohio and Kentucky, there's always a chance that a tornado could come. Uh, when I was a little boy drawing Snoopy on the floor, one time a tornado came through in our little house and it missed our house, it missed all of our trees, it didn't disturb anything. But mom and dad had a camper parked on the back corner of our, of our backyard. And the camper stood there, and we woke up the next morning after the threat of a tornado came through, and nothing was disturbed except the camper was completely upside down, sitting exactly where it was. Um, that left a big impression on me. And, uh, that's part of the, the uh, reason I decided to do a story about a tornado. I even talked with my editor, should I do this? The town I grew up in was Joplin, Missouri, the town I, I was born in. I wrote this story, Otis and the Tornado, two summers ago, long before the, the recent tragedy. And uh, I feel for those people in Joplin, Missouri, who lost their lives. And I understand that some people in my audience may have had a near miss or an actual tragedy with a tornado. But my publisher and I decided, if anything, maybe this is, this is a way to create some awareness uh, in a safe way for, uh, for the children. And uh, it gives me great uh, uh, feeling of comfort that, that maybe some child that actually does en encounter tragedy could read a fun story like Otis and the Tornado. So with that, let me do a drawing. It's really what I'm maybe a little better at than anything else. I wanted to play center field for the Cincinnati Reds when I was 14 years old, but I was a better drawer than I was a hitter. So let me, let me get this feeling here. So let's just play along. And uh, also, I might note that it's fun for me to be in Washington, D.C., because I did a book called Of The I Sing. I did the pictures for President Obama, which came out last fall. Thank you. Check that book out. Very proud to be a part of that. OK, so here we go. When I'm drawing my characters, very often I start with circles. And basic shapes. And I work very small when I'm doing these picture books, so this is a little different for me. But I care deeply that I don't mess this drawing up because it matters to me what you think of my work. Do you know that? I care deeply what you think and you and you and you and all your parents. Because my name's on these books. I'm trying to tell my 15-year-old, sign your homework and be proud of it. I have two boys at home, Griff and Graham. They're 13 and 15. They've helped me with all of my work. I buy them things like food and clothing for their work. <laughs> it's the least I could do, right? OK, so let's see here. Some of you may guess what I'm drawing. But I have to get back, see? What am I drawing? Otis, yes. But I have to get back. See, if I'm standing this close, how can I tell what this part of my drawing is, how it's going to compare to this part of my drawing? You know, when I drew Snoopy, I used to get real close and bear down really hard. I learned to plan my artwork by stepping back and looking. Let me see if I'm doing okay. 
Thumbs up. Yes, thank you. Now, Otis is a tractor, and when I was drawing the picture for Otis, I did not want him to look like any specific tractor out there. I wanted Otis to have his own sort of style and look. So what I did was I gave Otis one wheel in front, like there are some tractors out there that have one wheel in front, but I also made, I also gave Otis his own original color. It's very important for me to get back to see if I'm doing okay there. And of course, uh, I'm very, uh, I'm b being a technical illustrator like myself, I'm particular about what kind of engine Otis has. So there's always something square, something cylinder, and something circular. And then of course, every engine has a spring. I am uh, really enjoying working on this big format, and it could change the way I work from this point forward. I'm making Otis go off the page because I want this picture to be bold. Here's Otis's back tire. Let me see how I'm doing. Now, how do we get personality into our character? This is a, an engine, it's a tractor, it has headlamps, it has metal. Otis has little eyebrows that are kind of like chrome. He has like uh, a place where they put oil in the top. The fun thing about making up your own story is you get to make up what your character's named after. People ask me, where did you get the name Otis? It came from uh, one of my favorite childhood uh, um, sitcoms, The Andy Griffith Show, right? Mayberry and all that. There was a, there was a lovable character in the, in the series named Otis. That's where I came up with the name for Otis the Tracker. Otis was the town friend on, uh, I always loved Otis. But how do we get character? The first thing I do is the highlight in the, in the eyes. There's a highlight where the sun is. And I'm going to put the darkest darks right around that highlight, just like I was painting a picture of Abraham Lincoln for of the I sing, because I want a motion in this tractor. I'm going to put the darks around there, and then all of a sudden, Otis is starting to look back at us. And then we bring his character home by this big Otis smile. And then the most important thing, Otis's exhaust pipe, where he says, putt, puff, puttity, chuff. And when you guys read Otis, when you parents read Otis to your, to your little ones, when you guys read Otis, I want you to feel like you've visited a, a friend. Every time you close the book, you visited a, a safe friend, a, a friend who will never let you down, a friend who is everything we all want to be, noble, brave. In this latest story, Otis is both brave and empathetic. He cares about that bull, even though that bull wasn't the most friendly. So thank you guys so much. What an honor to be here. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.